Hi there, thanks for joining us. I'm Ben Mankiewicz. Tonight on TCM, our focus has been on the career of Ursula Andrus. We've got one more Andrus picture coming your way. It's a send-up of her most famous role where she emerged spectacularly from the Caribbean wearing only a bikini, a belt, and a huge knife as James Bond watched from the shade of the trees. Up next, Andrus stars alongside Peter Sellers, David Niven, Orson Welles, and more than a half dozen screen luminaries in a parody of James Bond movies. From Columbia in 1967, Casino Royale. Where Casino Royale fits into the James Bond universe has always been confusing and steeped in legalese, but the title itself wasn't tricky until 2006. When the current Bond, Daniel Craig, took over the role in 2006, his debut as 007 came in a movie called Casino Royale. This Casino Royale has nothing to do with the Daniel Craig version, except they're both Bond films based on Ian Fleming's first Bond novel. Here's the quick background. It's actually not that quick. In the early 1960s, Eon Productions was making the Bond films. Eon bought the rights to all of Fleming's novels except Casino Royale, which was already owned by another producer, Charles Feldman. And Feldman would not sell to Eon at Eon's price. Finally, when Sony acquired Columbia in 1989, the rights to Casino Royale were part of the deal, allowing Eon to make it in 2006 with Daniel Craig. Back to the 60s. Feldman, unable to make that deal with Eon, finally got Casino Royale made in 1967. But knowing he couldn't compete with the big-budget Bond film starring Sean Connery, Feldman decided to make his movie as a parody of those Bond pictures. Without the rights to Casino Royale, Bond producers Albert Broccoli and Harry Saltzman decided to make Ian Fleming's sixth Bond novel, Dr. No, the first Bond movie, and Dr. No is where Ursula Andress burst into the world's cinematic consciousness as Honey Rider, the first Bond girl. So, casting Andress in this Bond parody as Vesper Lynn was a significant coup for Feldman and Columbia. The plot here doesn't really matter. Bond, played by David Niven, has retired, but he's called back into action to take down a nest of ruthless spies. In addition to Niven, Sellers, Andress, and Wells, there is Woody Allen, George Raft, Charles Boyer, John Huston, Jean-Paul Belmondo, William Holden, and Deborah Carr. Here it is from 1967, Casino Royale. Casino Royale was full of big names, really big names. Peter Sellers, David Niven, Woody Allen, Deborah Carr, William Holden, John Huston, George Raft, Jean-Paul Belmondo, Charles Boyer, and Orson Welles. But one could sincerely argue that in 1967, the best-known actor in that cast was Ursula Andress. From the moment she strolled out of the surf and into 007 immortality in the first James Bond movie, Dr. No, she had been a star recognizable all over the world. In the years since, she's been called the definitive Bond girl, setting the template. Born in Switzerland and fluent in French, German, Italian, and eventually English, she was also a quintessential jet-set Euro starlet. She also became the biggest international sex symbol of the era. Today, somehow, Ursula Andress is 84 years old. She hasn't acted in some time, but she's a photographer, and her work has appeared in international magazines. She sold her Beverly Hills home in 2017, now lives in Europe, mostly Switzerland, to be near her family. Coming up, this week's edition of TCM Underground, Tonight, a movie so ridiculously bad that it's still pretty bad. But it's fun. Stick around for director Ed Wood's Plan 9 from Outer Space.